So in flow, one of the most asked questions is how to mount the transmitter in gas service, especially for orifice flow meters. So let's take this example. Here's your pipe and here's gas flowing through it. Now the transmitter is put on top of the pipe or top of the tapping. And the second thing which is important to note here is that the slope of the tubing has to be towards the pipe. Now what is the use of this thing is because if suppose the gas service also has some liquid entrance in it, you would not want that to get trapped in your impulse lines. So because of gravity, the fluid is always going to go downward and is always going to remain in the pipe and it won't be a dead leg for the transmitter. Now the next question is what do you do in liquid services? In liquid services, the transmitter would be below the tapping and the slope. Remember that the slope will always be towards the transmitter and not towards the pipe. Why? Because you want the liquid to be trapped here and if there is any gas which is lighter, it will always stay up and it will never come to your transmitter and thus the gas would not get trapped inside your impulse lines. Finally, you might ask for liquid services is same. So would it be same for steam services? The answer is yes. For steam services also the transmitter is put in the downward direction so that the water gets condensed and it is able to store in the impulse line such that the steam cannot directly hit the transmitter and damage it. The second most asked question is what are the various types of tapping available in orifice flow meters? This concept depends upon line size. So for smaller line sizes, the Vena contractor is near to the restriction. However, for larger line sizes, the Vena contractor would be away from the restriction. Does that have any issue on our tapping selection? Absolutely, it has an effect on the selection. So the line size basically helps us to decide which orifice tapping to take. If it's nearer to the restriction, the Vena contractor, the tappings would also be taken from near to the orifice. And away is the Vena contractor from the restriction, the tappings are taken from that distance or as much approximation as possible from that distance to get the best DP that is available. For the first case, we'll go for corner tappings. So imagine this is our piping assembly and in this center, we want here to be an orifice with corner tappings because it's a small line size. Now here we have an integral orifice assembly that is usually preferred for corner tappings. So this corner tappings are usually preferred for line sizes which are one and a half inch or smaller. This entire assembly is actually given to us by vendor. So we have to just mate the flanges which are at the end with our piping flanges in the system. Now let us look into the next case which is flange tappings. For flange tappings usually we go for line size which are above one and a half inches. Now here this standard for using these flanges is as maybe 16.36. The next one being is pipe tappings. Pipe tappings also require a lot of consideration. As we had learned, this is pipe tappings, but here we have to know the exact location that needs to be communicated as to where the tappings have to be required because this cannot be given by vendor. Also, there are considerations that need to be considered that this could weaken the piping. So the piping schedule also has to be seen that is it sufficient enough that we drill a hole through the piping. Also, one more thing is that we are dependent on the field contractor to do it. So we have to give the exact location and we have to verify that in the field is the exact location being used to drill the valve. And this is quite risky. Why? Because we are dependent on somebody else and we cannot verify whether the exact tapping place was taken or not. Also, a certain big companies have found another way to it. Sometimes they do the method of approximation. So they would go for bigger line sizes on flange ratings and then they would do an approximation from pipe tapping to your flange. So in this way, they can ensure that the tapping is taken on uh, flange instead of pipe, but you have to do approximations to rectify for this error. And this is usually done for uh, line sizes which are pretty high like 24 inch or above such cases. Finally, what are the standards that are used for orifice flow meters in the industry? The first standard being is ISO 5167 because this is the most famous of all. ISO 5167 is basically divided into four parts. Let us explore each part. So the part one basically deals with your general principles. Part two deals with orifice plates, which is most important to us right now. Part three deals with the nozzles and part four deals with venturi tube. So let's look into part two now. Now let's, here's the index of part two. So I would try to just, you know, summarize with an easy way of trying to divide the index into four important categories. The first category being the type of tappings, which are defined in the standard. For example, when to go for corner tappings, flange tappings, DD, by do tappings etc the equations for sizing the orifice 
installation this is very important now we look into this and then finally the flow conditioners to be used now similar to this is another amazing standard which is api mpms 14.3 i personally love this standard very similar to orify this is also divided into four parts but they are called as chapters chapter 1 2 3 4 let us try to dig into understanding what are these chapters the first one stands for general equations okay one thing to remember here is all of these four deal with orifice plates only the second one deals with the specifications which is the most important out of the four the third one basically deals with application of 1 2 and 4 these three chapters and finally the fourth one deals with what was the background how was this developed etc so let us look into this chapter 2 which is specifications similar to your iso standard apm PMS 14.3.2 also has a straight run table and it is very similar to ISO 5167 but if you comparatively if you see this is more strict than ISO 5167 why because if you see the word MPMS here it stands for manual for petroleum measurement standards so because the petroleum products are more costly hazardous etc the more stricter ways are used so more straight run requirements etc are defined here but why do I personally love this and I would recommend you to read this standard is because if you see here for example I've made a video saying that when is the beta ratio between 0.3 to 0.6 etc so if you see here in this chart basically this chart is taken from API MPMS standard the x axis first two will have is beta ratio and on the y axis you're going to have the percentage uncertainty now if you see at very extreme lens which is 0.1 or 0.7 of beta ratio if you see the uncertainty it is too high and if you see here if we keep the beta ratio as 0.1 the uncertainty could go up till 0.60 percent but if you see in the middle range between 0.3 to 0.6 here the uncertainty is far less if you see the graph is going down so we usually that is why I recommend to keep the beta ratio between a middle range so such insightful information is available in these API MPMS standards now we have learned for orify split these two amazing standards which were iso 5167 and api mpms 14.3 there is another amazing standard which is asme mfc 8m but you would say oh my god there are already two amazing standards why do you need this one this basically is the connection between the orify's primary element to the transmitter how is this area been taken care now the engineering here is also very important let us try to give take some examples for it now imagine here in these two examples the valves should not clash with each other so what happens here is for the first case if you see the piping offset is done both the valves are at the same elevation but piping is trying to offset it so they don't clash but if you see at the below side the piping is same but the valves are put at a different elevation so that they don't clash there are various ways by you know having a degree to it etc but all of these ways are covered in this standard similar to that how should the transmitter be installed so for gas service it should be above the tapping there should be certain slope towards the pipe so because of gravity if there is any liquid it will fall back into the thing so all of these amazing things are covered in these standard and this mfc stands for measurement of fluid in closed conduit now let's look at the next one which is fabrication now in orifice plate you might have the side view certain things you might have seen it is called as bevel now what is this bevel and how do you know what should be the angle for such a bevel so for this case we are having a pip standard i found this standard to be very amazing and i would highly recommend I have, this is a small snapshot of one case where if you see here they've shown the bevels here they have shown is how should be the sample lettering done what things should be written basically what should be the dimensions the dimensions are given in the below table this is just to understand as to how the standard is and how you can give it to even a manufacturer so that you are very confident that everything is manufactured as per standard guidelines now finally this amazing standard has also for flanges imagine this is your hypothetical your integral orifice so this is all given by vendor and basically these two flanges are where you need to fit your integral orifice now these are normal flanges right so for this cases if you will actually see the standard that we will be using is just as maybe 16.5 which is the normal standard for integral orifice but if you see special standard is made for orifice flanges because holes are drilled into them so they'll directly start with maybe example 300 rating 
and if you see the other thing is they'll have jack screw in them so that you can remove the orifice plate etc so for such special cases you will be having ask me 16.36 which will be the standard used for orifice flanges now if you tell me with this understanding for restriction orifice what would you be using will you be using ask me 16.5 or 16.36 the answer is 16.5 because there are no holes drilled in the flanges so you can use for restriction orifice ask me 16.5 similarly for pipe tappings where the tappings will be taken from pipe for very high line size orifice you don't need any special standard for flanges so you can go for as maybe 16.5 now with so many standards coming into place let us try to have a quick conclusion of all of them the first one being is iso 5167 the second standard is api mpm is 14.3 both of them are similar but api is having more stricter conditions the third one being is as mfc 8 M. This is specially used when you are having the connection between the tapping and your orifice transmitter. Finally, this fourth one is PIP standard, which is the fabrication standard. And finally, a special flange standard for orifice flange, which is ASME B16.36. You can take a snap of it and you can remember these standards. There are even more standards, but these are one of the most used standards. And hence, we have listed these five here. Finally, in for orifice flow meters, if you want to learn about why is the beta ratio between 0.3 to 0.6 or how do you select the tappings for various things like integral orifice, flange tappings, etc. Or why is the static limit in transporter, this playlist here is going to be very helpful to you. It covers all of these amazing things of orifice flow meters. Thank you and please let me know what other videos you want to see in the comment section and we'll try to come and bring them together in next Saturday. Thank you and have a great day ahead.